What am I doing to myself? Why do I put myself through this? All right, all right. So recently did a, my very first reaction video to a Prager U video. And uh, as expected, it was rather controversial. And the majority of the comments uh, go back and forth between you are being way too generous to Candace Owens and to Prager U, and you're an idiot. Why are you so hard on Prager U and Candace Owens? Not a lot in between. And the funny thing is they kind of tend to come back to back. So I can look at the comments at any given time. And one of them hates me for the way I reacted. And one of them thinks I'm being way too nice for the way I reacted. <laughs> and it goes back and forth like that. So uh, with all of that said, we're going to check out another one of their videos. This one's called Was the Civil War About Slavery? I'll put the link down in the description if you want to check it out without my commentary. It's only six minutes long. And it's a uh, West Point professor, so I'm hoping for a pretty accurate telling of what the Civil War was about. Now, I recognize that being someone who's politically conservative, I probably came into that PragerU video in my desire to want to be as unbiased as possible. I was probably overly biased against it. I probably overcompensated. I recognize that. Uh, so I'm going to try to be a little more measured this time around. We'll see how successful I am with that. Big shout out to Austin in Leland, Mississippi. And Ethan, and I know I'm going to butcher the name of your town, Menomone Falls, Wisconsin. Please tell me if I got that right. And if I didn't, tell me how it's supposed to be pronounced. Thank you guys for your support on Patreon. Let's dive into this one. Was the American Civil War fought because of slavery? More than 150 years later, this remains a controversial question. Why? Because many people don't want to believe that the citizens of the Southern states were willing to fight and die to preserve a morally repugnant institution. Now I'll say right off the bat, and I, I don't wanna try, I don't wanna jump too much ahead of the game here a little bit, but let's recognize that in any war, the war aims of the opposing sides may be different and the reason that men enlist to fight in that war, if they choose to enlist rather than being drafted, sometimes are different from one man to the next and sometimes are very different from what they enlisted for versus what their government is fighting for. So I think a lot of times the controversy comes in because we are looking at what individual soldiers did or what one side did versus what the other one did. There has to be another reason, we are told. Well, there isn't. The evidence is clear and overwhelming. Slavery was, by a wide margin, the single most important cause of the Civil War for both yes. sides. Before the presidential election of 1860, a South Carolina newspaper warned that the issue before the country was the extinction of slavery and called on all- And, and why did they think that? Because a lot of people ask that question, why did South Carolina begin this process of the Deep South or the cotton states seceding if Abraham Lincoln was very clear in running for president that he was not in interested in abolishing slavery? Well, he just knew he didn't have that authority and he knew that wasn't going to happen. Well, the reason that they said that the issue was the extinction of slavery is because all throughout the U.S. history at that point, the 80 years or so that the United States has existed, there has been this delicate balance of power between free state and slave state. And that's why you have things like the Compromise of 1850 and the Missouri Compromise. And typically up until the last decade before the Civil War, free states and slave states had been admitted to the Union in about equal numbers because that kept that balance of power in the Senate. Well, that has changed now. And South Carolina and these other deep south states see the election of a Republican president, the very first time a Republican has been elected president, as the first domino to fall toward the extinction of slavery. No, Abraham Lincoln wasn't going to abolish slavery, but the Republicans taking power in Washington meant that slavery was no longer going to be spread to the territories. That was their policy. And without spreading to new territories as new free states were admitted, that necessarily meant the eventual extinction of slavery. And so they're preempting that by seceding. We're not prepared to surrender the institution 
to act. Shortly after Abraham Lincoln's victory, they did. The secession documents of every Southern state made yep. clear, crystal clear, that they were leaving the Union in order to protect their peculiar institution of slavery. Now, I will say this, that some of the northern southern states like Virginia, North Carolina, Arkansas, Tennessee, they did not secede until after the events of Fort Sumter and Lincoln calling for 75,000 volunteers to help quell the rebellion. So you can make the argument that Lincoln's actions in calling up militia to invade the South, uh, that's what pushed them over the edge. But that doesn't mean that slavery wasn't a factor for them as well. Phrase that at the time meant the thing special to them. The vote to secede was 169 to zero in South Carolina, 166 to seven in Texas, 84 to 15 in Mississippi. In no Southern state was the vote close. Alexander Stevens of Georgia, the Confederacy's vice president, clearly articulated the views of the South in March. And he was elected to the U.S. Congress after the Civil War was over. March 1861. Our new government, he said, was founded on slavery. Its foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man. That slavery, submission to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. And this is what's known as the cornerstone speech. And this is usually the first place people point to when they're talking about this. And again, I want to reiterate that I think part of the issue here is the argument of why was the war fought versus why did these states secede? There is no argument about why these states seceded. Uh, especially the Deep South, South Carolina, Florida, Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Um, these states absolutely 100% seceded because of the issue of slavery. There is no debate about that. The debate comes in about why was the war fought. Yet despite the evidence, many continue to argue that other factors superseded slavery as the cause of the Civil War. Some argue that the South only wanted to protect states' rights. But right this to raises what? an obvious question. The states' rights to what? Wasn't it to maintain and spread slavery? And all of their secession documents say exactly that. They will make the states' rights argument, but they make it in the context of slavery. And they specifically say that slavery is the constitutional issue at play. Moreover, States' rights was not an exclusive Southern issue. All the states, North and South, sought to protect their rights. Sometimes they petitioned the federal government. Sometimes they quarreled with each other. Now, part of this goes back to the foundation of the country, right? Uh, in the early days of the country, when we're operating under the Articles of Confederation, which was a much looser connection. It was really basically that the state was sovereign and that they were kind of in this loose confederation, this kind of almost like an alliance type of thing with a very weak central government above them. Well, a lot of people recognized this wasn't working, so they passed the Constitution to make a much stronger central government. People forget that. People love to argue that uh, being for the Constitution means you're for states' rights. Well, the, the Constitution was passed to, to make a stronger central government. And most of the opposition to that was in the South, in particular in places like Virginia. And so from the very beginning, there had always been a divide between North and South when it came to how much power should the federal government have versus how much power should the states have? And I think part of that, too, is not only because of the slavery issue, but also because of just factors of immigration. Uh, South is very heavily settled by Scots-Irish uh, folks, and, and that's true to this day. If you have roots in the South, you tend, especially in like Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, you're going to have pretty strong Scots-Irish roots. Um, and that idea of Scots-Irish is one I've talked about in other times. I won't get into it again. But uh, So they tended to be much more about local and state freedom than strong central government because the Scottish and the Irish had seen what happened when there was a strong government in London 
that kind of lorded itself over Scotland and Ireland. Uh, so they brought that with them to America. In fact, Mississippians complained that New York had too strong a concept of states' rights mm -hmm. because it would not allow Delta planners to bring their slaves to Manhattan. The South was preoccupied. So even then, their argument about states' rights, whether for or against, came down to the issue of slavery. They were perfectly fine in arguing against states' rights when it came to a state's right to oppose their freedom when it came to their slaves, right? Same thing's true with the fugitive slave laws. Uh, you know, if Ohio said, we are declaring that if a escaped enslaved person makes it into Ohio, that we're going to protect their right to freedom, the southern states would say, no, you need to give us the right to come in and get our property back. Well, that was opposing the state's rights of Ohio to do that. Pied with states' rights because it was preoccupied first and foremost with retaining slavery. 100%. Some argue that the cause of the war was economic. The North was industrial and the South agrarian. And so the two lived in such economically different societies that they could no longer stay together. Let's acknowledge right here that while slavery was exclusive to the South at this point, although we should argue that we should be reminded here that Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, Delaware all have legal slavery but remained in the Union. Um, the North did benefit from the institution of slavery. Uh, the cheap labor costs, really very little labor costs, just feeding and housing, um, in order to produce things like cotton, benefited textile mills in the North a great deal. So the entire country did benefit from the institution of slavery. Not true. In the middle of the 19th century, both North and South were agrarian societies. In fact, the North produced far more food crops than did the South. But Northern That's true farmers because had to- The South produced cash crops primarily, cotton, tobacco. These aren't food. These are crops that translate into money pay their farmhands who were free to come and go as they pleased, while Southern plantation owners exploited slaves over whom they had total control. And it wasn't just plantation owners who supported slavery. The slave society was embraced by all classes in the South. The rich had multiple motivations for wanting to maintain slavery, but so did the poor non-slaveholding whites. The peculiar institution ensured that they did not fall to the bottom rung of the social ladder. And it also meant that there wasn't competition for jobs. And that was something that was an issue in the North as well. There were people in the North who were morally opposed to slavery, but still weren't abolitionist. And some of them in part because they saw uh, four million newly freed black men and women as a threat to their society, as a threat to their jobs. They would bring in cheap labor, things like that. A lot of the same arguments that, that some people will make against uh, immigration today uh, is that they're competing for American jobs, that kind of thing. That's why another argument that the Civil War couldn't have been about slavery because so few people own slaves has little merit. Finally, Many have argued that President Abraham Lincoln fought the war to keep the Union together. He did. Not to end slavery. He 100% did. That was true at the outset of the war. But he did so with the clear knowledge that keeping the Union together meant either spreading slavery to all the states, an unacceptable solution, or vanquishing it altogether. Yeah, he, he quotes Jesus when he says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. That comes from the Bible. Um, and he goes on to say that either we will become all one thing or all the other. We cannot forever remain half slave and half free. He recognized that. He knew it had to change at some point. And I, I truly believe that had Lincoln just had the dictatorial power to, with a swipe of his pen, eliminate slavery forever, he would have done it in a heartbeat from the beginning. But he was a political pragmatist and he realized he didn't have the authority or the ability to do that. But war changes things. And as the war progressed, the elimination of slavery became a war aim. He recognized, listen, we, we've seen hundreds of thousands of deaths. It has to be, we have to take advantage of this, right? 
And this is an opportunity to eliminate slavery, to deal with it once and for all. And so once that opportunity presented itself, he did do it. But yes, at the beginning of the war, his clearly stated war aim was preservation of the Union, not slavery. And a lot of people will quote a letter he wrote, I think, I think it was to Horace Greeley, uh, where he, it was a private letter. It wasn't something he gave in a speech or anything like that, where he said, if I could uh, restore the Union by freeing none of the slaves, I would do it. If I could re restore it by freeing some and leaving others in bondage, I would do that. If I can restore it by re freeing all the slaves, I would do that. My, my goal is the preservation of the Union. In a famous campaign speech in 1858, Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. What was it that divided the country? It was slavery and only slavery. He continued, I believe this government yeah. cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. It will become all one thing or all the other. Lincoln's view never changed. And as the war progressed, the moral component ending slavery became more and more yep. fixed in his mind. Yep. His Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 turned that into law. Slavery kind of turned it into law. And I don't want to get too deep into this because we've talked about this before in other videos. This was a war measure that probably would have very quickly been found unconstitutional by the courts when the war was over. He was using his war powers to take advantage of an opportunity to free slaves in places that were eventually conquered by his, his armies. Because what was happening was, was as these Union armies were advancing into the South in places like Mississippi, Tennessee, uh, folks who were enslaved were taking advantage of the presence of the army to run away and to try and get protection from the Union armies. And so Lincoln had to create some way of being able to legally take these people away from slaves, uh, from slavery. Uh, and that became a way to do it. This did not free slaves in places like Kentucky or Maryland or Delaware or Missouri, where the Union was still in control. It only freed slaves, it declared free people who were enslaved in places that were under Confederate government and not occupied by the Union at the time it took effect, which was January 1st, 1863. It is the great shame of America's history. No one denies that. But it's to America's everlasting credit that it fought the most devastating war in its history in order to abolish slavery. As a soldier, I am proud that the United States Army, my army, defeated the Confederates. In Amen. its finest hour, soldiers wearing this blue uniform, almost 200,000 of them, former slaves themselves, destroyed chattel slavery, freed four million men, women, and children from we were doing so good. And I know he's a professor of history. 200,000 African-Americans enlisted in the Union Army. They weren't all freed slaves. Some of them were free men. Some of them had been born free men. Yes, a whole lot of them were former slaves themselves. And I think that's amazing that those men fought directly to help end slavery late in the war. Um, they probably weren't all former slaves, though. Human bondage and saved the United States of America. I'm Colonel Ty Sigley, professor and head, Department of History at the United States Military Academy, West Point, for Prager University. That was good. I agree with basically that entire premise. And again, it comes down to what do we mean when we say was the Civil War about slavery? Because secession especially for the Deep South, absolutely about slavery. Many of the political leaders, absolutely it was about slavery. For folks like Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, Alexander Stevens, the vice president, many of the state governors and, and things like that, absolutely about slavery. For the Union, when the war began, was it about slavery? No. Did people enlist in 1861 in the Union because they wanted to end slavery? No, they were doing it to preserve the Union. Did every Confederate soldier who enlisted do that because he wanted to preserve slavery? No, because the vast majority of those Confederate soldiers who enlisted that were privates and corporals and sergeants were not slave owners. Uh, many of them truly did enlist and fight because they believed they were protecting their rights, their rights 
to self-determination. 100% true. But is there a civil war if there's no slavery? Absolutely not. Slavery was the reason people seceded. Therefore, it was the reason Lincoln had to put down, uh, felt he had to put down the rebellion. And eventually it was the main end result of the war was the elimination of slavery. So any other argument is just disingenuous. And I do not for the life of me understand why people fight so hard to try and argue the Civil War wasn't about slavery. I just don't understand it. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Keep it civil, please, as always. You can disagree, disagree strongly without being disagreeable. And I want to say thank you to Owen in Evans, Georgia, and Frederick in Norway. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon. It is much appreciated. Have a great day, everybody.